Electronics. Today's video is the uh, formula revision video of analog electronics subject. So this is useful for your competitive examinations of electronics. In all examinations, analog electronics is very important. And also for your semester examination also, these formulas are very, very important. Okay, so I was receiving a lot of requests to do this video. So uh, here it is. So let us see the basic equations for all the uh, carrier related equations. That is the hole and electrode related equations, the current density, the, uh, the band gap, the Fermi gap. So all these things we are going to see first. Okay. So the first equation is energy gap of silicon. So we know that for the semiconductors, there is valence band and conduction band and there is a gap between these bands. Okay. So the energy gap of silicon, if you write in terms of temperature, it is uh, 1.21 minus 3.6 into 10 raised to minus 4 uh, into temperature times electron volt. The unit is actually electron volt. Okay. So if it is, if you are going to write it as temperature dependent format, then it is like this 1.21 minus 3.6 into 10 raised to minus 4 into the temperature. It is in Kelvin. Okay. For germanium, it is 0.785 minus 2.23 into 10 raised to minus 4 electron volt. Whereas if you are uh, writing it, uh, that is, there is also temperature here into T, where T is the temperature that uh, this times electron volt, where electron volt is the unit. Okay. So this is temperature related. If you want to neglect the temperature, then it will be, for silicon it is 1.21, for germanium it is 0.785 will be the value. Moving on to the Fermi gap, it is not by EF. Fermi gap is given by the equation EC minus KT where EC is the conduction band energy level minus K is Boltzmann's constant. T is temperature uh, into LN that is natural logarithm NC by NB where uh, NC is the, the, uh, the number of carriers in the conduction band. ND is the number of carriers that is the donors. Uh, the number of uh, carriers in the uh, valence band. Okay, so NC by ND will be the value. Now, uh, if you are going to write the number of electrons, N, N is equal to NC, number of carriers in the conduction band into E raised to EC minus EF by KT, where EC is the conduction band energy level, EF is the Fermi level, K is the Boltzmann's constant, T is the temperature. Okay, I'll read it once again. Number of electrons, N is equal to NC. So, the electrons will be present in the conduction band. So, NC into E raised to minus, minus of EC minus EF by KT. Whereas, the number of holes, if you're going to say, P is equal to NV into E raised to uh, minus of EF minus EV, where EF is the Fermi energy level, EV is the valence band energy level by KT. Okay, so this is the equations for the conduction band and the valence band general equations the most important one only i have noted so please note this down and also please make a note of this formula okay next moving on to the very very important equation which is mass action law np that is number of electrons in the number of holes is equal to ni square where ni is the intrinsic carrier concentration it can also be written in terms of the number of carriers in the conduction band and the valence band and also the energy gap is equal to NC into NV into E raised to minus EG by KT. Okay, so that is the equation. Moving on to another important equation which is drift velocity. Drift velocity is very, very important. Uh, that is the speed with which the electrons or the carriers are drifting from one end to the other end. BD is equal to mu which is mobility into electric field is the equation. This is very, very important. Next, the whole voltage equation. Now, what is whole voltage or whole effect? That is when uh, if there is a conductor. And if you are going to apply magnetic field uh, towards the end of ends of the conductor or towards the conductor, then there is a potential difference created due to the movement of charge from one side to the other end. So when the charges are moving from one side to another side, there will be a uh, the plenty of charges in one side. There is a vacancy of charges in uh, another side, right? So there is a potential difference created, right? So this potential difference of this voltage, that is, or this effect is called whole effect. And the whole voltage is given by Vh is equal to V into I into Vd. Now, V is the applied magnetic field intensity. I is the current. Vd is the drift velocity. So, the electrons are actually drifting from one side to the other side due to the applied magnetic field. 
So the drift velocity also come into play. Now the whole coefficient Rh is equal to 1 by rho. Where rho is the charge density. It can also be written as rho charge density rho is equal to Q into carrier density. Or it can be simply written as N into value of an electron. That is number of electrons into the charge of an electron will be the charge density or carrier density. Okay. That is the equation. Okay. Next is conductivity equation. Conductivity is represented by sigma. Sigma is equal to rho charge density into mobility mu. And also resistivity. This is also uh, very important. Resistivity is also represented by rho. Don't get confused with this. Uh, carrier density and, uh, and uh, resistivity. Rho is the resistivity. And resistivity is equal to 1 by sigma which is conductive. So rho can be used to represent uh, resistivity also and also charge density. Okay. So it will be given what is the value whether it is resistivity or whether it is charge density it will be given. So rho that is resistivity is equal to 1 by conductivity and mobility. Next is important equation mobility of the conductors or the carriers mobility is equal to uh, in terms of the whole coefficient we can write mobility. Mobility is equal to conductivity into Hall coefficient. So we have already defined the Hall coefficient here. Hall coefficient Rh is equal to 1 by charge density. This we have already discussed. Moving on to the very very important side of this carriers. Which is the diffusion current density and the drift current density. This is very very important. Diffusion current density Jp is equal to minus Q into dp into dp by dx. Okay. I will explain each terms. Jp is the current density of or due to holes is equal to minus Q that is the charge into dp which is diffusion coefficient. So we are talking about the diffusion current density. So there is a diffusion coefficient dp into differential of dp by dx where p is the number of holes. Okay. Jn or diffusion current density due to electrons Jn is equal to minus Q into Dn, Dnx, sorry, Dn by Dx. That is differential of number of electron with respect to X. Okay, next moving to the drift current density equation. J, which is the drift current density, is equal to Q into P mu P. That is, P is the number of holes into mobility of holes. Plus, number of electrons into mobility of electrons. The whole into electric field. So we have already discussed these equations in the formula revision video of electronic devices and circuits also. So please, uh, if you are not, uh, if you not watched that video, please do watch that video also. Okay. Now you can uh, write uh, the relation between the diffusion coefficients and mobility in terms of kT by Q. Okay. That is dN by mu n. That is diffusion coefficient of electrons by mobility of electrons is equal to Diffusion coefficient of holes by mobility of holes is equal to kT by Q. This is the relation. Okay. Now, this is again, uh, we are talking about the mass action law once again. That is, now we are going to specifically talk about the n-type semiconductor and the p-type semiconductor and about the electron and hole concentration or the numbers in the uh, particular type, whether it is n-type or p-type. That is, a carrier concentration in N-type silicon or semiconductor, if uh, we are going to talk about the electrons, the number of electrons, if it is Nd, okay, if Nd is the number of electrons, then the number of holes, Pn0 means the number of holes in the N-type semiconductor, that is the meaning of Pn0, okay. So, if Nd is the number of electrons, the number of holes is equal to Ni square by Nd. So, here also, we have, uh, while discussing the mass action law, we have discussed that the product of number of electrons and number of holes is equal to Ni square. So, if you want to find the number of electrons means uh, Ni square by P. And also, if you want to find the number of holes, P means Ni square by M. Simply, here also we are applying the same equation. So, the number of electrons is equal to Nd. The number of holes is equal to Ni square by Nd. Now, the carrier concentration P tip silicon or semiconductor in general then the number of holes in p-type semiconductor majority will be holes in a n-type semiconductor majority will be electrons so in p-type semiconductor the number of holes is na 
then the number of electrons is ni square by na okay so these are the most important equations of carrier uh, carriers electrons hold the conduction uh, band valence band their current densities and all now we are going to discuss about the most important equations of the pn junction the built in potential all those things so the junction built in voltage okay so when there is a pn junction there is a built in voltage and the built in voltage v0 is equal to vt into ln na nd by ni square vt is a threshold voltage na is the uh, the acceptor concentration d is the donor concentration and ni is the intrinsic carrier concentration then the width of the depletion region wdp is equal to the width of depletion side at p side and n side it is a sum okay and it is given by square root of 2 into epsilon s where epsilon s is the permittivity of the material or a semiconductor by q which is a charge by uh, into 1 by na plus 1 by nd into delta v where delta v is the built in potential okay now the charge is stored in the depletion region qj is equal to q into na into nd by na plus nd into a into width of depletion region where a is the area okay then the depletion capacitance is given by cj is equal to epsilon s into a by width of depletion region epsilon s is the permittivity of the semiconductor now for diode the diode current for ideal diodes is given by most of the time we will be using this equation only so i is equal to i0 into i0 is a leakage current into e raised to qv by kt minus 1 okay so this is the most commonly used equation for diode also so these are the most important equations of pn junctions and depletion region capacitance and the diode okay now let us see the uh, the rectifier equations and the equations for darlington pair and resonance circuit for rectifiers this is very very important uh, table because i have seen a lot of questions coming from various areas of this table okay so please note this down so we are going to compare half wave full wave and full wave uh, capacitor so the sender tab then full wave bridge rectifier okay so the vdc or the dc voltage of half wave is given by v m by pi for full wave it is 2 vm by pi for bridge it is 2 vm by pi now the vrms voltage is vm by 2 for half wave for full wave uh, vm by root 2 for bridge vm by root 2 now the ripple factor this is very very important for half wave it is 1.21 the way question papers with questions directly asking the ripple factor so please note this down 1.21 for half wave 0.482 for full wave and for bridge 0.482 then the rectification efficiency or eta it is 40.6 percentage 81 percentage for full wave then bridge it is 81 percentage then for peak inverse voltage or piv for half wave it is vm full wave it is 2 vm for centered uh, sorry for bridge it is vm okay so these are the important uh, equations of the rectifier so these are the modern equations of rectifiers and also if you see the frequency for half wave the frequency f out or the output frequency is equal to input frequency whereas the case of full wave it is f out is equal to twice the input frequency this thing also you should know okay so these are the important sum up table of rectifier next moving on to the bjt and fet comparison this is also very very important BJTs are current controlled devices. Input current controls the output current. Whereas field effect transistor, the field is affecting. That is a voltage. They are voltage controlled devices. So we have discussed in uh, about this in a couple of videos which we have done earlier. Again, I am telling it once again for the uh, for those people who have not uh, heard it. For BJT, it is they are having high gain. For FET, they are having medium gain. BJTs are bipolar because the current is contributed by both electrons and holes. So they are bipolar in nature. Whereas in the case of FETs, there are only electrons which contributes to the current. So they are unipolar. Okay, so that's why BJT is bipolar junction transistor. It is bipolar in nature. Whereas FET is unipolar in nature. Then BJTs are temperature sensitive devices, whereas FETs are having little effect to temperature. Then talking about the gain bandwidth product, BJTs are having high gain bandwidth product whereas FETs are having low gain bandwidth product. 
So these are the important uh, comparisons between VGTs and FETs. The main things are that one is unipolar, one is bipolar. That is VGTs, from the name itself it is clear, bipolar junction transistor. So they are bipolar in nature whereas FETs are unipolar in nature. And also VGTs are current control devices whereas uh, FETs are voltage control devices. Again from the name field effect transistor we can understand that field or voltage is affecting the FET. Okay. So this is the main comparison between VGT and FET. This is a set of equations of uh, tuned amplifiers. Uh, the resonance equation and all and also the Darlington pair. So for tuned amplifiers, the resonance frequency F0 or the tuned frequency F0 is equal to 1 by 2 pi into square root of LC where L is the value of inductance in the tuned, uh, tuning circuit and C is the capacitance. So bandwidth BW is equal to F0 by Q. Okay, tuning frequency by Q which is a quality factor. The lower frequency or lower sideband frequency FL is equal to F0 minus bandwidth by 2 and higher uh, sideband frequency FH is equal to or higher cutoff frequency FH is equal to F0 plus bandwidth by 2. Okay, so this is the equations for the tuned amplifiers. Next moving on to the Darlington pair. So this is called Darlington pair. This we have discussed in one of the previous uh, year question paper discussion. So, connecting of two BJTs together in this format is called a Darlington pair. Okay, so uh, this uh, Darlington pair uh, is having a base collector and emitter connected in this manner. And the total gain A is equal to 1 plus beta 1 uh, into 1 plus beta 2. Where beta 1 and beta 2 is the gain of the two uh, transistors or BJTs. Then the transconductance GM is equal to 1 plus beta 2 into GM1. Which is the transconductance of the first uh, transistor. Okay. So this is how uh, these are the uh, some important equations uh, and also this is how the transistors are connected in a Darlington pair. Okay, so this is all uh, equations which I have included in this video. We will be doing a part 2 of this video. In that we will be discussing about the cascaded amplifiers, the cascaded structures and all the other oscillator equations and everything. So I hope that these equations and this video was useful for your preparation. If yes, please do give it a thumbs up and also share these videos maximum with your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.